Poland Daily Business Edition. Tonight, uh, we will talk about uh, United States and Israel. Uh, Donald Trump has been relieved from the charges of collusion with Russia. Uh, the Prime, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, two weeks before election, went to the United States, visited the country, and was granted the presidential, U.S. presidential decision of uh, that the Golan Heights will remain as a part of Israel. What all that means to the world politics, what all that means to the Israel Near East, and maybe to us, we'll ask uh, Mr. Artur mm. Rublevsky of Lazarsky University. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. So, uh, let's start from uh, this two years long investigation when the liberal media in the United States uh, and in the world were charging the United President of the United States, elected President by majority of Americans, of electional fraud, in essence. Yeah, you are right. The so-called progressive media were selling the story about the collusion between President Trump, his people, and the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. Or the After, Russian propaganda machine. That... Uh, but of course, on the orders of the Russian president. Right. But as we see now, after 22 months, and after spending something like over 20 million dollars, and after investigating and interviewing uh, more than 500 people, there is nothing left against President Trump. No evidence, no smoking gun, which would prove that President Trump colluded with the Russians. Of course, we had on the way 37 people from Trump's associates uh, accused and prosecuted, some of them at least, but there is no hard evidence that there was collusion that Russia helped Trump win the elections. So it's a, a big victory to President Trump. This is probably the best week of his presidency. And let's remember that the support for President Trump is oscillating around 50 percent, which is very, very good sign for future, for his re-election bid. And Democrats are very weak, divided. We don't see strong candidate which could be really a threat to the re-election process of President Trump. So we see that many, a lot of money has been spent and there is nothing really which proves that President Trump uh, was not only uh, helped by Russians, but also obstructed justice. At least this is what the four-page special report based on Mueller report prepared by Attorney General William Barr says. There is no obstruction of justice and no collusion. This will definitely have an um, effect on uh, the upcoming election, but this is really like two years from now, um, year and a half that uh, we will have the voting. Um, what is happening in America and American politics? Uh, that is strange to me. They, that is that the American m main politicians tried to walk sort of middle of the way, far away from the right side and far away from the left side, try to navigate the, the Christian moral values, regardless whether you are Democrat or Republican. From our perspective, both of those representatives of the parties had pretty much the same uh, kind of attitude towards main uh, global challenges. Well, right now, we see Donald Trump that is trying to solve the, first of all, name the problems and then solve them and politics of democratic politics who are extending to the socialist narrative, to far left options. What happened in America? Are they out of their mind or maybe the society changed that this can resonate uh, among voters? We can say that there is a renaissance of conservative values Christian values in the United States, because this is what they showed in 2016 when President Trump has been elected with the help of evangelical circles, support. So we see that this progressive America or leftist uh, institutions and organizations are not particularly strong at this time. And there is nothing on the horizon suggesting that better work 
or some progressive socialist candidates could win next election in the United States. So we can say we have now America going back to roots, to this purit Puritan uh, origins more than looking ahead into some sort of leftist uh, experiment, uh, which they already, uh, to some extent, implemented and went through in 1960s, for example, or later in 1970s. So um, I think that conservatives and conservative wave is now still on the on the rise, which is a good. Uh, sign for President Trump and his chances for re-election uh, in 2020. The President uh, Trump will build his uh, electoral power over the uh, economic measures. He will tell. Of course, the economy unemployment is, is low. Booming to, to today. This morning, I read in the Wall Street Journal that, for example, California is expanding in terms of economy is adding more jobs. California, the state California, that does not like Donald Trump at all. And which actually had some uh, periods of very bad weather, for example. People are running away from California because of wildfires, for example, or uh, other natural disasters caused maybe by global warming. But despite that, American unemployment is at the lowest from 80s, 1980s, it's a little bit more than 3%. We have solid economic growth in the United States. And this is what Americans want. They want uh, prosperity, good economy. Maybe it is just coincidence, but if it is coincidence, we can say that Donald Trump is a very lucky man because it's a good time for American economy. And I think Americans want try to change this. They want things to stay this, even if they criticize Tr Donald Trump, they like him, maybe psychologically, because he's like one of them. He's not a perfect man. But definitely we see also conservative sentiments on the rise in the United States. And look what happened now. Only after two years in office, President Trump managed to introduce two new Supreme Court justices, conservative Christian justices to the court. So it's a historical moment, even from this perspective, and also this alliance with Israel. This is what many evangelicals like, because they believe that who helps and supports Israel is liked by God. Right. Uh, there is one word that we should mention even very shortly. Very important part of the policy of Donald Trump is China and uh, setting the trade relationships with that country. Of course, it seems there will be a kind of compromise because be between China and the United States because they are two big and important countries to fail. So they will choose to cooperate instead of fighting. Uh, and it's even more important for the Republic, People's Republic of China to have good relations and to implement those six or five points on the American agenda. They want to uh, fin China to finish subsidies to the uh, industries, Chinese uh, industries. And first of all, they want China to stop stealing intellectual property, for will example. Will China stop that, do you think? Uh, they will say so, and maybe they will do something cosmetic, but we are not naive children. We know they will, they won't stop, but uh, it's a different matter. <laughs> yeah, and this is very, actually very interesting, and we should really devote us some more time to the phenomenal growth of the China, People's uh, Republic of China, and but the rising growth, the growth hundreds is, of millions of people out of the remember poverty. remember that growth is also slowing down, and China started this year, for example, to get older, and instead of 150 million people, new people born, less people were born last year, something like this. So China is also now under uh, um, undergoing some changes and they will look for cooperation with the United States, for example, because of the slowing down of Chinese economy. Yes, but that's a topic of another conversation. Artur Wroblewski of Lazarski University was our guest, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, that was it for tonight's Poland Daily Business.